Yeah. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Time For You, where you get to kick back, take your shoes off, grab some fuzzy socks, uh, hot cocoa, we're in the middle of winter, if you, if I know we don't know where you are, <laughs> and get ready to just spend some time getting present, um, nurturing, well-being and love in your life. That's what this podcast is all about. My name is Shelia Stevens, and this is my beautiful friend and colleague, Leah Vianby. Hi. So, Leah, <clears throat> we're doing some real talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These these podcasts I love, and they also intimidate me a little bit. It's like taking off your coach and mentor mask <laughs> and just being your own human person. It's a little bit like, oh, I know. <laughs> if you know the, the actual human person I am, I'm not sure where you would want to go with this. But we love her. Oh, thanks, Leah. So, Leah. What I I don't know how this top how far this topic will take us. I told you in the like little bit of precursory discussion we had to it, but some was something that kind of happened the other day that was actually pretty a profound feeling for me, mm. and I just wanted to share it with you. And the way I thought I could kick it off is, um, do you know how sometimes when you have something in your body, like mm -hmm. let's say you've got this back pain or this knee pain or something that's you've had it for so long you just got used to it you learned mm. to live with it um you may not have even really noticed it or, or rather you noticed it but you didn't notice it mm -hmm. and you know how sometimes when you go i'm just making this up but you go to the chiropractor um, and he or she like cracks your back, uh, mm. realigns everything. And suddenly your body is completely free mm -hmm. of tension and pain that was being caused by that blockage. And you have this moment like, um, whoa, I <laughs> didn't even realize how much pain I was mm -hmm. in before until it was actually gone. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. Maybe maybe everyone out there has had a similar mm -hmm. experience to that. And so I'm just going to call it like a low-grade pain. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, it's not something that takes you off the playing field or out of your life, but and then suddenly it's gone or it's like when you get glasses mm -hmm. and you mm. didn't and you didn't know you needed them <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> like when i got my trifocals mm -hmm. and i got like on the top you can see um in the distance in the middle mm -hmm. you can see the mid range and the bottom you can read <laughs> And I like picked up a book for the first time and I'm like, what? I didn't know mm -hmm. that a book could be so clear. <laughs> you yeah. could read so easily. So I, I remember that feeling. I was in fourth grade, actually, when I got my first um, glasses and I could see the leaves again on the tree. And I will never, ever forget that feeling. Yeah. Totally. I, I remember that as well. I think I got my first glasses around seven years old or eight years mm. old, something like that. Yeah. It's like suddenly everything's clear mm. and crisp and you can mm -hmm. see, you can see kind of reality that you mm -hmm. didn't see before. So I had this the other day. I mean, really it's so fresh for me. Like it was like one or two days ago and I had done kind of a regular work day. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I was working on this new program that, um, Sandra and I are, we put it out into the world yesterday. I don't know if you saw mm. it. It's um, mm -hmm. yeah. the find your message. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting down um, in the living room on the floor. I was oftentimes just go and sit down there with the dogs and they kind of gather around me mm -hmm. after work. And I was having like a belly scratch with them and a cuddle. And I remember suddenly having this feeling like, I'm safe. Mm. Like there's, I'm not just safe. There's nothing to fear. I I had this sort of um, kind of insight or, or knowing, I don't, I don't even know what to call it, but it was like, oh, I sat on the floor here yesterday with the dogs. And I sat on the mm. floor here yesterday, the day before with the dogs. Mm. And 
actually, my life is kind of like that. It's like kind of safe. And, and then all of a sudden I was, um, free of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was free of fear. It was like that where you're free of pain in your body. I was free of fear in my, in my mental space. Mm. And all of a sudden I realized how long mm -hmm. I had been carrying this low grade fear with me, mm -hmm. this fear of the future, like mm -hmm. a very dif diffuse fear, like not something like, oh, I'm afraid of World War III or I'm afraid of the environment falling apart or I'm afraid of this or that. No, just this kind of subtle, low grade, generalized fear of everything that mm. is somehow going to be less safe in the future than it is now. Mm -hmm. And it was like somebody took a two ton weight off of my shoulder. Mm. And then I was like, <laughs> where did my mind go from there? <laughs> my my mind went from there like, um, hopefully this stays, this sticks. <laughs> because it felt so good. Mm -hmm. It felt so good. It felt mm -hmm. so, and I was just like, oh yeah. And and I'm just going to speak it out. Like I, I tell mm -hmm. you, I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. going to be my human self, you know? Yes. I was just like, oh, my business isn't dangerous. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, you were thinking your business was dangerous? Mm -hmm. You know, um, just a dumb thought like that. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I lived in that feeling for like an <laughs> evening and the next day. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> and the only way I can describe it is um, it's kind of like where we touch the space of what's real mm -hmm. and where we wake up to the illusion of of the energy we were living in before mm -hmm. so i think sometimes we talk about the illusion of life and and um everyone has their own understanding of what that means right that it's all just mm -hmm. an illusion and it's not the reality for me it's moments like that where i see very clearly what's real and what's illusory mm -hmm. and there's nothing I could have done to one, recognize that I was in that low grade fear, or at least not, mm -hmm. not to the extent that, I, yeah, I don't even know how to put it into words. And there's nothing I could have done with my intellectual brain to get to that moment on the floor, mm -hmm. on the carpet to be like, yeah, now let's please wake up to what's real. <laughs> And I, you know, and I want to share that because I think there is a, there's a thing about being in this understanding of the three principles and hello, if you're new, that's what we're talking about here, always on the mm -hmm. podcast, this beautiful understanding that was brought into words by Sydney Banks in a particular way that hit our ears in a particular way that helped us to wake up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think sometimes when we kind of understand more how we work as human beings, like, oh, we feel our thinking. Oh, we don't have to put so much attention on our thinking. Mm -hmm. That's that's stressful. And then we feel better and we can come back to a good feeling. And oh, there's a there's a deeper intelligence within us and it's guiding us to more health in our life. And um, oh, we're aware of our thinking and this intelligence. And we get this understanding and Leah and I used to like to call it like a different instruction manual for being human. Mm -hmm. And while that is incredibly helpful, there is a real limit sometimes to what we can actually do with that instruction mm -hmm. manual. And I think the reason is Leah, and this is where I'm going to be very curious about your input. There's such a power to universal consciousness right? Like the idea that there, the energy of life is brought to, brought to life through our consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. it, like whatever 
is in our field of consciousness, whether it's a low grade fear feeling, whether it's a very specific joy thought, it doesn't matter. There's all kinds of energies in our field of consciousness that come in through our senses and thought Mm. is just one of them. Mm. Right. And they are so perfectly made that sometimes they just, ah, trying to find the word for this. They just stump us. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you know what I'm trying to say? Totally. Mm. What what comes to mind is actually, I had Dickon in my group yesterday, Dr. Dickon Bettinger. Mm-hmm. He's one of the oldest teachers. Um, he he was a student of Sydney Banks himself, and he's a wonderful, kind, loving human being. And what comes to me is something he said yesterday, it, like... It's simple, and it is. It's either we are in the feeling of our thinking or in the feeling of being in life. Yeah. So, and all these emotions of tension, low grade or 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 really heavy anxiety. It's when it gets stuck and this life force and this intelligence and and mind coming through us doesn't flow. So it's kind of this either or simple. And what he also said is life wants us to evolve. And there are going to be police officers, as we were talking last times, time, or sick dogs, or difficulties in business or in finance or with your body. And then we go through something in life. And when when we get through it, we evolve towards being more loving and kind and and another layer probably of um, consciousness reveals itself to us and maybe that's totally made up and I, it's not truth like with capital T it's connected like we we are in something and and we try our best to stay present and to do whatever shows up for us and then we are coming through and somehow often there is something to see mm. or to feel or to to see different and life gifts us moments like you had mm. and it already did before it did yeah. in your life in my life even when we didn't know about the principles we had like whoa <gasps> and something changed so That's just what came to me. Like, yeah, somehow we can't force it and we can't do it intellectually to have a deeper insight. But what I truly see is that we we can build the muscle of awareness and sometimes we are in the low mood or in this low anxiety feelings or in some kind of life circumstances that are not that easy for a while. And we are coming back again. 
somehow. Yeah. We never know when, we never know why, we never know how. <laughs> yeah. And our intellect hates that. But hates it. It's it's in this ah, dance. Mm. It, I don't know. Do you hear something in that? So that's what, what came. You know, uh, yes, I hear a couple of things. So first and foremost, I hear <laughs> we're just all explorers here. Mm hmm like these conversations even that we have are we're just like kind of human beings and we're trying to figure out like what is going on <laughs> you know we're exploring and we're, we're asking ourselves you know who am I what is this how does life work what is this deeper meaning and I feel like there's so much mystery still totally in it all and I I've had some one-on-one -on -one coaching with Dick and like last year, beautiful coaching that I so much appreciated. And also in a very difficult time in my life. And we had this conversation about, you know, life wants us to evolve. And I said, well, how do you know that? You know, like, mm. well, like, is it truth with a capital T? And, and he, for himself, he sees that to be true. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's something in that I a hundred percent do. Um, I've started to see that more and more last year and this year, like, and I, I think I sent you something recently, Leah. I don't know if you watched the video. It's that guy who channels Rashar. I don't know. Mm -hmm. his, his, yes, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. I even um, forwarded it to a client. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to tell you. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I love that so much because, you know, what he was kind of pointing to was this sort of wave. You showed the wave as well just a minute ago. You guys can't see us on the podcast, so you can't see that <laughs> Leah was making a wave with their hands. But it was just like... I had been through years and years and years mm. of no fear. I wasn't in a low grade, mm -hmm. fearful feeling, right? Um, I was, and then I wasn't again for a long mm -hmm. time. And then I was in it again, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was showing like this, the curve is always moving upwards, mm. yeah. right? The same mm -hmm. idea that 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 somehow we're getting um, put back down in a low vibration. That was his wording, Mm -hmm. um, in three P's, you might say you might get put down into a low mood for a while or, or mm -hmm. a low grade feeling mm -hmm. to move up a notch uh, mm -hmm. again, or the way he was talking about it was you're up in a high vibration for a while and you're downloading all kinds of things mm -hmm. and you have to come back into a low grade energy to ground it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. that conversation of your spiritual self connecting with your human self and integrating mm -hmm. that information. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, I don't know. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know. And mm -hmm. we're all exploring it. Yeah. I, I have it very practical. And it's, again, it's not the truth. It's a possibility of a truth. I was drinking and not like every day, like alcoholic drinking, but um, every couple of months I really had a night and that was ugly. That was not fun and I couldn't stop somehow. So there was a an addictive thing in it and when... I came across this understanding. I already, before I did a lot of therapy and energy work and self-help and coaching. And um, I was in already in a, in a better or higher consciousness or better state, but it was still some how there. And when I had this, for me, really profound insight to waking up again to this. It's not a, I know, it's a remembering, a feeling. Uh, there are not even words for mm. this kind of remembering. It 
when I came out of it and back into really being human and in life and even being around drinking, I didn't drink for four years. It was like, no. And every day again, am I still there? Do I still don't want to? Oh, yeah, no. And it was kind of in the moment, again and again and again. So this habit dissolved. And then I started to drink again, not a lot, just sometimes and with very close friends like Shelia, we had a, a drink. <laughs> yeah. And with that came a deep, deep inner knowing of I'm never going to end up there. Never, ever again. Mm -hmm. And if I would, it's not a problem because I know the way out. Mm -hmm. So somehow, like, it, a seeing, an insight, a change that really changes us from the inside out. Um, stays in our field, in our room, in our consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, they... and yeah, mystery. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Life is um is a series of of reawakening. Mm -hmm. But we don't ever go completely back to sleep. Even do you know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. what I that's what I hear. Totally. That's that's yeah. why this upwards curve. Yeah. Right? That's what I feel as truth as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those were our musings for today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leah, for jamming with me. Thank you. These real talks. And we hope you got something out of it for yourself. Like Leah and I, um, our deepest intention is that you'll hear something for yourself that you that helps you to wake up a little bit too and brings you a more wonderful life than you already have now. That's really why we do these conversations. Mm. Um, so if you heard a little something, stick with us, um, subscribe to the podcast, uh, tell a friend or family member who you think might could profit from these conversations or just find them fun listening to <laughs> on a walk or uh, while doing the laundry. And um, we'd like to have them in the community and get to know them too. And We'll hear you the next time on the next episode of Time For You. Till then. Bye.